what? Fuck it. Play my intro. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our special guest, True Talent Trent, a.k.a. Ginger Josh. Welcome back to We Fucking Love TV, everybody. I broke into the studio. Nick's not here. Brunette Josh isn't here. It's all about the ginger this time around. Finally, I don't have these ass clowns holding me back. I can talk about what I want, when I want. Fuck them. Let's do this shit. So by the request of my friend Brunette Josh, I went ahead and, and finished House of Cards. As a matter of fact, I hadn't even finished season one yet. I was waiting for season two's premiere to get closer before I watched it and I forgot about it. So I decided to pace out season two of House of Cards so I wouldn't finish it well ahead of the new season coming out. And I started watching it and couldn't stop. I watched the entire second season. Well, I watched the last three episodes of season one and all of season two in a matter of days. It was fucking amazing. I guess now would be a good time. If you, you know what? Fuck it. If you haven't seen all of House of Cards season two, it's your own fucking fault. It's on Netflix. You can watch it at your own pace. So I'm going to go ahead and say right now that I'm going to give some spoilers away. But it's only a spoiler if you haven't got off your lazy fucking ass and watched it in the first place. So I will say this. My only problem with season two is that we're led to believe, at least, and I believe in my heart, that Doug Stamper is now dead. I thought the character was great. I thought the actor portraying him was great. I thought that every storyline he was involved in was great, and none of them had reached their end yet. I have a strong feeling that he's dead because the helicopter passes over the day after, and he's laid in the same position. The blood's dried. He hasn't moved. So I'm assuming he's dead. They could always soap opera him back to life, but in my opinion, he's dead. And without Doug Stamper, the show takes a big hit for me. So... In honor of the greatness that was Doug Stamper, I went out on my own and got a sponsor for this episode of We Fucking Love TV. Promotional consideration is paid for by the following. Oh, oh, you better, oh, Big Daddy, oh, you better have my money, oh. Is this the future you want for your daughter? Lying on her back, turning tricks for cash? Cause that's where she's headed. But if that's not what you want, then send your daughter to Stamper's Finishing School for Wayward Young Women, and we will set her on the right path for a good life. That's right. Here at Stamper's Finishing School for Wayward Young Women, we will get your daughter off her back and on her feet. Thank you, Stamper's. You're welcome, Bethany. Just one of our many graduated students from Stamper's Finishing School for Wayward Young Women. Send your daughter to us. We will not fuck her up the ass. Welcome back, fuckers. And uh, that commercial got me a little emotional. You know what? Fuck it. Blair hates it when we do this shit that can be picked up on the mic. I ain't editing this shit out. Blair might have a mild cardiac infarction whenever he hears the finished product, but fuck him. Nobody gives a shit. I'm lighting a fucking cigarette. Fuck you guys. Hey, Blair, guess what? That ain't no more, bro. Fucking pussy. Anyway, back to House of Cards. Season one was amazing. I absolutely love season one from beginning to end. There wasn't any dry spots. You know, for a show that has no action, it keeps you right there the whole time. So as great as season one of House of Cards was, which was fucking amazing, I thought season two was even better. I felt like there were moments in season two that might have been a little bit rushed, but overall I thought it was great. The new characters that were introduced were amazing. I thought that Jackie was fucking awesome, doing a great job as the majority whip. But season two ending without a fucking word spoken, Kevin Spacey standing over the desk in the Oval Office and then giving it the O. His most emphatic knock of the entire series as the new president of the United States of America is amazing. But for me, the only thing greater than Frank Underwood as the president of the United States on a fictional television show is Kevin Spacey as the actual president of the United States in the real world. Let's talk about another Netflix original series. Orange is the New Black. 